Welcome to my message today as I talk about the prayer of praise, the prayer of praise. And this sermon is part of a series I'm doing now uh, called Connecting with God, the Lord's Prayer. Connecting with God, the Lord's Prayer. And so what we call the Lord's Prayer uh, is probably the most famous prayer. You know, that prayer that starts out, Our Father uh, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I don't know if you've ever heard that prayer or not, okay? But that's what I mean by the Lord's Prayer. We're going to read the whole thing uh, very, very soon here, okay? But before we do that, I just want to talk about uh, this prayer uh, a little bit and, and just help you to understand, hey, first of all, it's one of the greatest ways you can connect with God. I mean, who among us doesn't want a closer connection with God? I know I do. And honestly, one of the best ways you can connect with God is through the Lord's Prayer. Number two, realize it is the model prayer. Uh, we, this is so important because when Jesus uh, taught it to us, uh, uh, he said, pray in this manner, okay? Pray in this manner. Manner. He was saying, okay, I want to I lay down for you uh, a manner to pray, a, a model uh, to pray. And with that model, it's fine to say the exact words, okay? No problem whatsoever, all right? But you don't want to do that like, uh, you know, what Jesus talked about also in Matthew chapter 6, right before he gave this prayer, he, he warned us about vain repetitions. And some people, that's how they treat the Lord's Prayer. They just, they can just say it, you know, without any true uh, thought or consideration or it's just it's just empty repetition you can't let that happen okay but I don't think you have to say the exact prayer what it's talking about and that leads to number three is a prayer list a prayer list and what I think we must do is we need to learn how to have the right if you will content uh, in our prayers and, and, and you, when you look at this prayer, you need to look at it as a prayer list. Now, where does the Bible start? Where does Jesus start with the manner to pray? The answer is praise and thanksgiving. And that's why today we're going to talk about the prayer of praise. The prayer of praise. Before we get to that, I want to read uh, the Lord's Prayer, and I'm going to read this every, every week, uh, Matthew chapter 6, uh, 9 uh, through 13. Here is the Lord's Prayer. In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, there it is. There is the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about connect with God through the prayer of praise. Connect with God through the prayer of praise. And that prayer of praise is our key verse for today, Matthew 6, 9. Let me read it to you. In this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. There it is. There's the prayer of praise. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now with that said, let's talk today about how to connect with God through praise. How to connect with God through praise. And so as we begin, let's realize that, that this is where you begin when it comes to prayer. So prayer is talking uh, with God. Okay, it's, By the way, it's two-way communication. It's not just talking to God, it's talking with God where you talk to God and, and, and you have a relationship with God and he speaks and he leads you as well uh, in uh, prayer. And so when you start to talk with God, where should you start? I mean, in other words, you want to talk to God, but, but you don't know exactly what to say. Okay, what's, what's the beginning point? And the answer is the first thing to say to God 
are words of praise and thanksgiving. Let me repeat that again. The first thing to say to God are words of praise and thanksgiving. I love Psalm 100, verse 4. It says it this way. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Wow. The Bible says when you enter into his gates, all right, when you enter into his courts, you, you come before God Almighty. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. It says, enter his courts with praise. Be thankful to him, it says. And I love this, bless his name. Bless his name. That's how we're to pray. This is the first thing we ought to pray. So if we're going to connect with God, we do it through praise. Now, I want to break this down into two parts, okay? And the first thing I want to say is this, praise God for who he is. Praise God for who he is. As this prayer uh, begins, it begins with the phrase, our Father, our Father, our Father. As you pray, you, you begin uh, with uh, realizing who you're talking to, okay, who, who God is. Now, for you to pray this way, uh, number one, you have to establish a relationship with God as your heavenly Father. Let, let me let you know something, okay? You have to choose God as your heavenly Father. All right? You have to choose God as your heavenly Father. And, and what I mean by that is, physically, of course, he's your father. Uh, he is the creator God. He, he made every single one of us, all right? And we had no choice in that. God, God gave us life, okay? God gave you life. But let me also uh, hasten to add, spiritually, you have a choice to make. And you have to choose him as your heavenly father. So not everyone can say our Father from a spiritual uh, perspective because the Bible says before you come to Christ, I call it B.C. I'm going to talk to you about B.C. before Christ. I'm going to talk to you about C. Christ. And then I want to talk to you about A.C. after Christ. But the Bible says before Christ, John 8, a Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. Now, that's a pretty strong statement there, but it's the truth, okay? And what Jesus was saying is, okay, listen, apart from, from me, apart from salvation, uh, your father uh, is actually the devil. Spiritually, you're separated from God, all right? And with that, your desires come from your father, the devil, and that's what you want to do. In other words, you want to do things contrary to God, contrary to his word. But here's the deal. God wants to be your heavenly father, but he wants you to choose him, all right? He wants you to choose him. And you need to make that decision to establish a relationship with God as your heavenly father. And the way you do that is to place your faith in Jesus. In John 1, 12 through 13, the Bible says, but as many as received him, to them... He gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So the Bible says to become a, a, a child of God, okay, the right to become a child of God, you have to receive him. And to receive him, according to this passage and many others, is to believe in his name. In other words, to recognize that, that there's one way to heaven, and that's through the name of Jesus. And basically, here's how it works. You come to God and admit that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. And just like Steve Reynolds, you're a sinner, I'm a sinner, we, we've all broken God's laws, and, and we deserve hell, but God wants us in heaven with him. He made a way, and listen, that way is Jesus because it was Jesus that came and he lived a perfect life. And, and when he died, he didn't die just like you and me are going to die. We're, we're just going to die, right? Uh, he died as a sacrifice. He, he died as a, a substitute. 
He paid the price for our sin, the Bible says. And the great news is he didn't stay dead. He was buried and praise God, listen to this, on the third day, he rose out of that grave victorious over death and hell. And, and listen, what we have to do is believe that. In other words, believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. Believe that he is the Savior and Lord and ask him to come into your life to be your Lord and to be your Savior. And when you make that decision, he not only becomes your, your physical father, you had no choice in that, all right? He gave you life. But you got to choose him as your spiritual father. And when you make that decision to believe in Jesus, that's exactly what happens. And that leads to after Christ. And oh, it is so exciting. After Christ. Galatians 4, 6-7 puts it this way. And because you are sons... God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. And because we're his sons, we now have this, this relationship with him where we can cry out to him as Father, Father. And, and listen, not just Father, Abba, Father. And that, that term means like daddy or papa. It's, it's a term of affection. It's a, it's a term of closeness and intimacy uh, with uh, God. And he goes on to say in verse 7 of Galatians 4, Therefore you're no longer a slave, but you're a son. And of a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Praise God. Listen, today, if you have believed in Jesus Christ, when you pray, you pray, Our Father, okay? Daddy, Papa, come to Him. In fact, I love Hebrews 14, I'm sorry, Hebrews 4, verse 16. It says, How can we come to Him? Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of of need. We, we can listen, we can boldly come before God because He's our Father. And, and when you pray, praise Him for who He is. But to do that, you have to establish that relationship with Him through the Lord Jesus Christ and make Him your spiritual Father. But that's not all. The second part of praising God for who He is is worship God as your Holy Father. And listen, so much more. So not only do you need to establish a relationship with God as your heavenly father, you also, when you pray the prayer of praise, you worship God as your holy father and so much more. And so much more means, you, today we're going to talk about some of the attributes of God, what God, God is like. And so in this prayer, this model prayer, it says we're to pray, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Now what that is, that's a prayer of praise specifically for uh, God's uh, person and, and what God is like. And, and one thing that God is like is he is holy. Holy. Uh, it's holy be your name. Hallowed be your name. And when we come before God, uh, there needs to be a respect for God, for the name of God. And, and, and we're to honor uh, uh, God and, and show respect for uh, God. And I love the example of Isaiah chapter 6. It's a beautiful example of what uh, we're to do. And here is Isaiah. And Isaiah comes before God, and, and here's what it says in verse 3. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. I mean, when, when Isaiah goes into the presence of God, uh, he finds the revelation of the holiness of God, that God is holy. And I, it says, holy, holy, holy. And, and, and that's a, to me, that's a reference of the, of the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And verse 4 says, And the post of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. And here we find Isaiah coming and, and witnessing the, the holiness of God. And uh, 1 Samuel 2, 2a says this, 
1 Samuel 2, 2a, no one is holy like the Lord. No one, amen, no one is holy like the Lord. And when we come before God, we say, hallowed be your name, and we recognize the holiness of God. And when that happens, listen, Isaiah's response to the holiness of God was confession of sin. It goes on to say in verse 5, So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King. I love that. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You see, when, when Isaiah entered into God's uh, connecting with God and praying and, and saying to God, hallelujah, holy, holy is God. I mean, in the midst of that, God shows up and, and basically uh, Isaiah recognizes his, his sinful nature and, and he actually confesses specific sin to God. This is important to note. Uh, he says, uh, I've got a sinful tongue. God showed him, Isaiah, listen, okay, you, you, got, you got a sin issue in your life, and, and it's your tongue. Uh, Isaiah says, I'm a man of unclean lips. God showed him that in prayer as he understood the holiness of God Almighty. And so when we come before God, we worship him, and we pray, and we say, hallowed be your name. And, and, and that name, that name is a, is a name of, of honor. In fact, Exodus 20, verse 7 uh, part of what we call the Ten Commandments says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. I mean, I mean we have to be very careful uh, in the way we refer to God. And the way we refer to our, our Lord, and, you know, it just breaks my heart, okay? I just, it, just, it just happened to me just, just a few days ago. Uh, somebody, you know, used the name Jesus Christ in a flippant, like a cursing type uh, manner. It just, it just crushed me in my spirit. It just, it upset me so much. Uh, you know, don't do that, okay? Hold the name of God in respect and, and, and reference, okay? So we see the holiness of God, and we're to worship our Father, our Holy Father, but He's so much more. So we're talking about when, we, when you come and you talk to God, just to make this as simple as I can, okay? I'm trying to give some depth to this, kind of give you the theological underpinnings of what I'm trying to communicate here today. But the bottom line is, you begin praising God for who He is, okay? And, and, and yes, He's holy, but, but He's so much more. And, and, and so I say, uh, practice Psalm 115, 1a, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory. To his name give glory. And I believe what it's talking about there is not just his name, but, but who is he, his name, and, and what that represents. So praise God, and I want to give you some of his attributes. I want, I want to describe to you God Almighty. He's holy, yes, but he's so much more. Let me just run down through this list uh, rather quickly. But, but I want you to just, um, just imagine yourself going to prayer. And, and when you think about God, just relax and start talking to God. And just, you know, whatever thing you appreciate about God, you know, at that moment or that time, begin to praise him. And some of the things you can praise him for beyond holiness is his love. His love, 1 John 4, 8 says, God is love. God is love. Praise God for his love. God is good. Praise him for his goodness. I love Psalm 34, 8. It says, taste and see, the Lord is good. Taste and see. Oh, taste and see, it says, the Lord is good. Lord, we praise you for your love. We praise you that you're good. Hey, we praise God that he's present, present. Uh, John 14, 18 uh, says, I will not leave you uh, comfortless. He won't leave you without comfort. He'll, he'll be present uh, in uh, your life. That's a wonderful thing to never be alone and to have uh, God Almighty with you. Uh, he's wise, wise. James 1, 5 says, if you lack wisdom, ask God because God is wise. Talk to God. Say, God, I need some wisdom. Praise him 
that he's wise. Praise him for his wisdom. Uh, praise God. I love this. He's kind. He's a kind God. Uh, Titus 3, 4, and 5 uh, talks about this. Part of that passage says, The kindness of God our Savior appeared. The kindness of God our Savior appeared. He's a kind God. He really is. He, he's powerful. Amen? He, he, he's a powerful God. Revelation 19, 6 says, The Lord God omnipotent reigns. The Lord God omnipotent reigns. He's, uh, uh, um, he's omniscient, that means all-knowing. He's omnipresent, that means always present. But he's also omnipotent. These fancy theological words I'm throwing out at you today, okay? But he's all-powerful. Uh, omnipotent means powerful. The Lord God is omnipotent. He, he reigns. Praise him for his power. How about his mercy? Where would we be without his mercy? Uh, 1 Peter 1.3 says, according to his abundant mercy. According to his abundant mercy. He's a merciful God. He's unchanging. How about that one? I mean, you, you know, I don't know about you. I, I, I change, you know, almost by the, I want to say by the minute. I might, I might not be quite that, that drastic, but, but I'm pretty close, okay? I mean, we're all moody and we have different things going on in our lives or whatever, but not God. You, you can count on God to always be the same, okay? Uh, Hebrews 6, 17 through 19 says, uh, by unchanging counsel. God, God is there and he has unchanged. He's, he, he, he's always the same, okay? Uh, and then how about this? Sovereign. He, he's so sovereign. Romans 8, uh, 28 and 29 talks about he can work all things together for good. Just imagine that. He doesn't say everything is good because not everything is good, but there's a God in heaven the true God, the one you pray to and the one you talk to, and, 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 and our God it can take anything and everything in our lives and he can work it together for good, for good. Praise God. And then here's my number one. Okay, what, What's your number one? I want you to think about that. What, what's your number one favorite attribute of God? Here's mine. He's faithful. I, I don't know. It's just, to me, the faithful part of God kind of uh, is tied to everything else, okay? I mean, I mean, you put faithful in love, faithful in power. Faith, I mean, I, I always put that word faithful before it all because if he wasn't a faithful God, then, you know, I'm not sure uh, what those things would mean, uh, to be honest. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.9 says, God is faithful. God is faithful. Hey, what have I left out? I know I've left out some, right? And that's what the blank represents here today. What, what is it you want to praise God for? The point I'm trying to make is you don't have to get into some rote um, pattern or whatever. But the idea is when you go to God, you, you pray to him and you say, uh, our father, hallowed be thy name. And, and you praise him and you worship him and, and, and just whatever is on your heart for the moment. God, thank you for your love or, or God, thank you so much for your mercy or, or God, thank you for this or whatever. Just worship him. Enter his courts uh, with praise. That's the first thing you say to God. But then also the second thing is thank God for what he has done. Thank God for what he has done. Now, you say, well, where's that in this prayer? Well, I'll tell you where it is. It says, our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. So when you think about heaven, what does the Bible tell us about heaven? Well, James 1.17a says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from where? From above. And comes down from who? The Father. So when we say our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, when we say in heaven, that means a lot of different things, but one of the things it means is he's the provider. He, he, every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from God the Father, okay? It comes down from God the Father. And, and what that says to me is be thankful, be thankful. And you know what it's so you know, in prayer, it's so easy to fall into the trap that you're just always asking, but never thanking, all right? 
never taking the time to give God thanks for what he has done. And one of the most incredible stories of this uh, in Luke, is in Luke 17. And the Bible talks here about some lepers. And uh, without, you know, I could do 15 minutes on this at least. But just let me simply say this. I mean, have leprosy was like the worst, okay? I mean, I mean it was horrible. Uh, it was painful. Uh, you, you were segregated. You were set aside. Uh, I mean, it was horrible to have leprosy. But the Bible tells us that Jesus came and he healed these lepers. But notice what happens. So Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? I mean, just imagine this. Ten lepers healed by Jesus. I mean, he healed them. The leprosy is gone, all right? I mean, they're now whole. They're now uh, clean. They're, they're now, because they were viewed as unclean, by the way, okay? That's another thing. They were, they're now clean. They're, they're healthy, okay? They, they're healthy. They're no longer in pain. They no longer have, have uh, you know, stuff oozing out of their skin and th things like that. What a miracle. What a miracle. And you would think every one of them would be saying, thank you for healing me. Nope. That's not what happens. The Bible tells us that only one returned to give thanks. And, and, and Jesus said, were there not ten cleansed? Question. But where are the nine? Verse 18, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this one foreigner? Just, just, oh my goodness, this is one of the saddest passages in the Bible. But does God ever say that about Steve Reynolds? Hey, Steve Reynolds, look at what I did for you today. I haven't heard a peek out of you when it comes to Thanksgiving. Don't you know that I, I'm God in heaven and, and, and every good gift comes down from me and I gave you a lot of good stuff today, but I'm not hearing any thanks from you. Please don't let that happen, okay? Here, here's some areas to thank God. Thank God for material blessings. Material blessings. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, 4 through 5 says, For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving. For it's sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Okay, and this is talking about eating your food. Okay, God gives you food, and it says it's sanctified by the word and prayer. Take time to thank God for your meal. Okay, just you know, just make that a regular habit before you eat. Just it can just take a, you know, a few seconds. That's fine, or it can be longer. It doesn't matter. But the point is, just say, Lord, thank you for providing this food. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank God for material blessings. That's, that's like a roof over your head, clothes on your back, and yes, food in your stomach. Just the material things of life that he gives us every single day. Your car, if you have a car, you know, just anything and everything that he has blessed you with. And then secondly, thank God for relational blessings. You know, relationships are so special. And like Paul said in Philippians 1.3, he wrote to the church at Philippi, and he said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Just in your prayers, thank God for your relationship. Thank God for your parents. Thank God, uh, if you're married, for your spouse. Thank God for friends. Thank God for coworkers. Thank God for church family. Uh, thank God for, for your children or if you have kids or whatever. The point is, who are the people in your life that you do life with them. You do life together. Thank him. Say, Lord, thank you for these people. And then the third thing is thank God for, listen to this, physical blessings. Physical blessings. And here I'm talking about health. I'm talking about wellness. Psalm 139, 14 says, I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Let me read that again. A praise. I will praise you, the psalmist says. I am fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. I'm wonderfully made. And as he thought about God's creation, his body, he says, marvelous are your works. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows it very well. Thank God for physical blessings. Now, it's fine if you have illness, you have 
have uh, you know, disease, pain, whatever, things that are wrong in your body, yes, pray about that. We're going to talk about that later. Okay, that's part of the prayer, what I call the prayer of dependence, and we'll get to that, okay? But what about thanking God? I like to put it this way, okay? Maybe, maybe your right arm needs some prayer. It's hurting, okay? But how's that left arm doing? Good and good? Okay, <laughs> you know, so why are you asking God, help me with my right arm? Why don't you say, Lord, thank you that my left arm is doing really good, okay? And, and just praise him for health and, and, and for wellness. And yes, if you have health needs, certainly pray about those. Pray for God's healing. Pray for God's grace uh, in your life. But thank him for uh, your body uh, and the blessing of it. And then lastly, and this is one we often overlook, thank God for spiritual blessings. Spiritual blessings. Yes, thank God for material blessings. Thank God for relational blessings. Thank God for physical blessings. But what about spiritual blessings? Ephesians 1, 3 highlights this. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. What, what, what do I mean by spiritual blessings? What, what are some of the spiritual blessings? Well, one I think of is the Bible. Thank, thank God for the, for the Bible. Where, you know, where would we be without the Bible? I mean, we would be lost. We, we would be in danger. We would be in bad shape, okay? I mean, to, to think that God Almighty would reveal himself in, in words that we could read and study and, and apply to our lives that, that can enhance our lives, make our lives better, lead us, guide us, direct us, and, and to know it's the perfect word of God. What a spiritual blessing we have in the Bible. And then another one I, I love is, is the local church. I love the local church. I love it. And, uh, and you know, I know it's not perfect. All right. Just always remember, Jesus didn't die for a perfect church. All right. The Bible says that Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And you know who knows more about the bad stuff about the church? And the church is the people, by the way. I'm not talking about some building or institution. The church is the people, okay? We, the people are the church. And, 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 and you know who knows more bad stuff about me and about the people that call Capital Baptist Church their church home? He knows a lot of stuff, okay? He, you know, you think you know something. You know, Pastor Steve, he's, I don't, he's, I don't, he's not very good at that. Or, you know, did you see him do that? Or he messed up over here or he sinned or whatever. You know, I get that, okay? Uh, and, and it happens to us all, right? Uh, but you know what? God knows all that, but he still loved the church. The church is not a perfect church. But I always like to say, I get up, and this is truly sincere. I get up every morning, Monday morning, to make our church better. I, I know, you know, God knows better than I do all the, all the negative things and the, and the sin, but I, I know more than you do, okay? <laughs> I probably know, uh, humanly speaking, I probably know the most, perhaps, okay? But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get up and I'm going to work at it. I'm, I'm going to try to lead us in a growing relationship with Jesus. In areas where we're mature, areas where we're falling down, areas where we're all messing up, let's grow up. Let's mature, Amen. Thank God for the local church, and I thank God specifically for Capital Baptist Church. And then as we end here, the Holy Spirit. Thank God that we have God's Spirit living in us. What a spiritual blessing. So as we think about this, I want to close with the greatest blessing of all, and that's Jesus. Jesus. 2 Corinthians 9.15 says, Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. You know what that's talking about? That's talking about Jesus. He's indescribable. He's such an incredible gift. Honestly, we don't even have the words to truly comprehend, to understand the magnitude of what a blessing Jesus is, okay? But do your best, okay? And what I mean by that is thank God uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. So listen, prayer. Prayer is, is one of the greatest ways to connect with God, to get close to God, to get intimate with God, to be near God. 
to sense God's presence in your life. And the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer gives you the prayer list to make that connection. And the first thing it tells us to do, the first thing to say to God is to praise God. Praise Him for who He is and thank God. Thank God for what He's done in your life. Make that connection with God in your life.